the life of thanksgiving makes you earn favor with God. Makes you earn favor with God. The lowest, I'll give you four points. I'll give you four points in the levels of thanksgiving. Number one, the lowest level of thanksgiving is giving thanks to God for such as miracles, gifts, pleasures, worldly success, riches, and easiness of life. Sometimes, however, we do not even thank God for these things. That is the lowest level of being a thankful person. You thank God when He gives you money. You thank God um, when, you, when He makes you succeed in whatever you do in life. You only thank Him when He gives you. That is the lowest level of being a thankful person. That's the lowest. That's the least. Don't stay there. You need to climb up. Okay? Because that is good, but it's not good enough. We need to elevate ourselves in the spiritual life. We need to be closer and closer to the Lord. I cannot remain all my life at a kindergarten level. I need to move on. I can't remain a baby always. The Lord Jesus, He wants men for His kingdom. Even if you're a woman, but He wants you to be a man. But not like those who do those changes. <laughs> Don't be that at all, please. But you need to be a man. Meaning be strong. Be strong. Don't be weak. Oh, please God, please God, please, please. I beg you, I need to buy a car. Can you help me? Some people go and pray and ask God to help them to win lotto. Can you give me the numbers, please, in my dream at least? Come to my dream and give me the numbers, but I want them to be the winning numbers. Please, what are you doing? <laughs> the lowest level of thanksgiving is when you thank God when He gives you. And sometimes God gives you, but you don't even thank Him for it. And that's bad. The second level. Number two, the higher level of thanksgiving is giving thanks to God for the little and simple things in life as well. Such as life itself, recovery from a cold, good health, our Christian roots, etc., etc., etc. This is a higher level. You thank Him for the small things, not the big things. He gave me a Ferrari, I should thank Him. But no, thank God for life itself and for your health. We always say this. We never appreciate things until we lose them. We never appreciate things until we lose them. To go and plant one tooth in my mouth here in Sydney, to plant one tooth, it could cost me, I don't know, I could be wrong, but it could cost me easily around $5,000, maybe more. One tooth. God gave us 32 teeth for free, baby. 32 teeth for free. And I'm still complaining. Imagine you have a mouth with no teeth. Good luck. What are you going to do? Go and plant 32 teeth in your mouth. You need a big mortgage. Why don't you thank God? I'm still able to walk. What are we whinging and complaining about? I'm still having food on the table. I still have a roof over my head. It doesn't matter if your house is smaller than the neighbor's house. It does not matter that your car is cheaper than the neighbor's car. It does not matter that your clothes are not as expensive as the neighbor's clothes. It doesn't matter that your wedding ring was not as expensive as your friend's wedding ring. It is not about materialistic things. It is about thanking God 
of everything that he has given you for free. When I look at a human being being born in Africa, starving, dying, starving. When I look at a little child that is homeless, living in the street, searching for food in, in the rubbish. When I see people have nothing, absolutely nothing, then why am I complaining? Yet God has given me everything I need. When you are a thankful person, you are a content person. You become content. There is a saying in the Arabic language that says, contentment is a treasure that never ends. Contentment is a treasure that never ends or never ceases. When we're content, I'm on top of the world. I'm the richest man on earth. But if I don't have contentment, if I have the whole world for me, it's not enough. It's not good enough. We need to thank God. Every morning, you wake up and you are still able to see the light of the day. Thank Him for your eyesight. For the eyesight He's given you. There are so many people that are blind. They will give up everything they have just to regain their eyesight, but they cannot have that privilege. Yet we see the, day, the, the light of the day quite easily, but we take it for granted. Thank God for the little things. He will give you big things. These things are apparent and visible, but quite often taken for granted. Number three, we should also give thanks for the hidden or unseen things in life, not the visible, like I see the daylight. I thank him for the good health. I thank him for a recovery from a, an illness. These are the visible things. But we need to thank him for the hidden things as well. Not just the visible, but the hidden ones as well. We should give thanks for the potential calamities that God has prevented from happening. God's care for us and His mercy and compassion for us. The trials that we go through compared to the trials which God has had prevented us from going through, the ones we go through compared to the ones God pushed them away from our side, they don't be 1% of the ones that God has prevented us from entering. What we go through is not even 1% to what God has prevented us from going through. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful of the things that are hidden of the things that are hidden, meaning I need to thank God and say, Lord, I believe that you have not allowed so many trials to come my way because you knew if I were to go through that trial, I would have not survived it. Out of your love, mercy, and kindness for me, you pushed it away from me because you know what I can handle and what I cannot. I can assure you, a lot of things God pushes away from us. And because, because we did not go through them, we never realized what God had done for me. Because I never went through them. So that's why I'm not grateful, because I never experienced them. But I need to be aware and thank God for those trials that he pushed away from my way. Number four, the highest level of thanksgiving is to give thanks for our tribulations. This is the highest level of being a thankful servant. 
when you thank him for the troubles, the tribulations you go through. It is extremely difficult for us to thank him when we are living a miserable life. Have you ever seen someone coming out of the exam and coming out having failed miserably and is rejoicing for failing the exam? Hallelujah, guys. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I failed the exam. Thank you, God. Yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> Have you ever seen anyone doing that? No. When are we happy? Only on good occasions. I passed the exam. I'm jumping. I'm jumping out of joy and happiness. Yes, I made it. I made it. But nobody rejoices. Yes, I failed. I failed. Nobody. We need to learn to thank God for our failures. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> we need to thank God. As a couple, husband and wife, there is no couple that does not go through some sort of an argument, misunderstanding, bit of a friction, disagreements. Sometimes, let's say the wife disagreed with you as a husband. I'm not saying always, because when it's always, there is something wrong. But sometimes the wife disagreed with you. Don't be upset. Don't be angry. Don't retaliate. What if her disagreement was from God, not from her, for you, my dear husband? What if God is trying to teach you a lesson? Maybe you are lacking patience. Maybe you are lacking humility. Maybe you are lacking being a thankful husband. So God wants to teach you. So he's going to put it in the wife's heart to stand against you and disagree totally with you and argue the case till the end. She's not going to give up. She's stubborn about it. Well, maybe you need to be thankful. So what do you do, my your husband? You go out and into your room alone, kneel there and pray to God, to Jesus Christ. That is the God, the only God. There is no other God but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you go to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I am the, ble the most blessed person on the face of this planet. I am so grateful. I am indebted to you, Lord, for you have given me a wife that is an absolute pain in the neck. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now that's what I call a wife. She gives me hell, but I may be needed. It is not always healthy to walk through paradise. You need to see hell. Sometimes it is good to see hell. You see, if I don't see hell, I'll never appreciate paradise. In fact, I'll never understand the value of paradise if I don't go through hell. We would never appreciate the light if we did not see darkness. We would never appreciate the health if we did not encounter sickness. We would never appreciate our feet if we were not crippled and paralyzed. We need to see the other side. The highest level in thanksgiving is when you thank God, when we thank God for our tribulations, for our hardships. We should thank God in the midst of difficult times and troubles and to be content and thankful in times of tribulations. St. Paul rejoices in tribulations. We should be thankful that we are worthy to endure tribulations. We should be thankful that we are worthy to endure tribulations. Do you know what that means? I'll tell you. We should be thankful that we are worthy 
to endure tribulations. You see, when we encounter a difficult time in our life, me and you, we will never, we will never be able to overcome any difficult moment in our life if it wasn't for God's grace. If it wasn't for God, there was no way in the world any human being could come and cut through this harsh moment of life unless God was with me. So when I was able to endure that tribulation, then I was made worthy because God was with me. And for God to be with me, that can only happen when He makes me worthy to be with Him. No one is worthy to be with God. No one is worthy to be in the presence of God. God is holiness. We are sinners. God is perfect. We are not. God is light and we can be darkness. For God to allow me to be with Him and He with me, that is worthiness from God for me. Therefore, I need to be grateful for allowing me to go through this tribulation because if it wasn't for God being with me, I would have died in that troublesome moment. It was God who saved me. It was God who delivered me. I can speak on your behalf, my beloved. When we sit for a moment between with ourselves and think for a moment and reflect on our past life, how many times did we go through moments um, and, and, and stages in the past that we said, I can't do it anymore. I can't make it anymore. I am in trouble. I don't know who can come to my rescue. I have failed. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm sure we would have said this at least once, if not more. Then how did you make it? Because you said, I can't. I can't go any, any more. I can't continue anymore. I've had enough. It is too much for me. I can't bear it. I can't carry this anymore. The weight is too heavy for me to handle. But we're still here. Who brought me out of that trouble? Who delivered me out of that difficult and impossible moment in history? God. God, my beloved. When people come and say, unless you prove it to me that God exists, unless I know, unless I come to this understanding, I will never believe in God unless I get to know. You will never find God when you use your head if you think you can find God with your intellectual level, if you think you can find God when you comprehend, when you fathom it, that day will never come, my beloved, because the day I am able to contain God in my intellectual level, He is no longer God. I am because I am greater than Him now. When I'm able to contain Him here, I'm greater than Him. Therefore, God is not a thought. God is an experience. You are only able to find out if God truly exists or not from the experiences of life. You will see the hand of God working in your life, the difficult experiences of life. Who pulled you out of them, my dear friend? Definitely was no one else, neither you nor anyone else. It was the Lord. It was the Lord Jesus working in your life. Therefore, when you went through the tribulation and came on the other side intact in one piece, thank God, for He has made you worthy to endure tribulation. Because if it was not for Him being with you, there was no way in the world you would have come out in one piece. 100%. So tribulations are good. They reveal to me the mighty hand of God.